Hello, welcome to Conversations with D. I have the wonderful duo, Mr. Mick Murphy and David Frank from the system. Hey, and how are you? hopefully hey. everybody can hear us. Yep. Yep. So this is awesome. Like I'm I'm trying to get out of my whole little uh, star well starstruck mode. But anyway, so <laughs> I've been a fan of you all for a long, long time. Like I'm 35 years old and I've been listening to all kinds of music. And I can just say that I remember being at karaoke in Atlanta, Georgia at something called Nancy's Pizzeria, Buckhead Pizzeria. And they started playing this song and it started going dun, 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 dun. And of course that was in my system. And I'm like, okay, yeah. <laughs> I've never, I'm like, hold up, that's a nice jam. And so from that, I mean, I already knew about Don't Disturb This Groove. I just knew about that. I knew about that or whatnot, but still it was just amazing just hearing that song. And I'm like, okay, the synthesizer, the whole Yamahas, the Rollins and Korgs, all of that that you think of in terms of instruments. And I just want to ask like, so for instance, what is your preference in terms of the synthesizers? Do you have a preference or is it just, <laughs> I mean, I'm, I know you've used all of them, but mainly um well you know it's it's varied over it's varied but i mean okay so a mini moog moog a moog synthesizer i, I don't bought, know how to I pronounce mini moog, moog or moog is your favorite yeah okay that's that's the base that's usually the base part of of most of our song, songs in our records is the mini moog would be like favorite second would be oberheim um yeah, Oberheim second. <laughs> Let's see. Um, <laughs> there's a lot of other ones. I mean, there's there really are a lot of other instruments. There's a company called Waldorf that does. Uh, there's a Q and a Quantum, which I use, which are right behind me. Actually, right here is the. Wow. Quantum. And here's a Roland Jupiter Six right here. And so there's a lot of great synthesizers. But you don't have a preference, though. You just use all of them. Well, well, for bass, mini moog, absolutely. Um, for for chords, um, analog chords, Oberheim, and for digital type sounds, probably a PPG Wave or uh, Waldorf things. Yeah, Waldorf instruments. That's awesome, and that's interesting because oh. I love stuff like that. I'm very like um I like to research and. I right. had my first Yamaha keyboard when I was what in the third or fourth grade. It was yeah. a long, long time ago. I'm not the best um, keyboardist or whatnot. I'm trying to perfect that. But um, I have a Yamaha right now sitting in front of me with monitors. And so I've been oh, working wow. on that during COVID-19. Yeah. That's so, good. Um, me, me too. We all really? have. Yeah, You're we an all expert. Have. You're an expert. We've been putting though. in work. <laughs> I know, well, right? I, I, didn't, I didn't mention also Steinway pianos. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Steinway pianos are great. Those are <laughs> I awesome. I imagine that too. So how did y'all get y'all start? I know that you all met when Mr. Um, Mick was in clear as a road manager, but how did that start? Like, how did y'all get y'all start? Let's say, hey, I want to get together, man. I think this would be great. Like, how did that happen? Well, actually, um, David called me. <laughs> so so the very beginning, I know, I know uh, we've told the story a bunch. Um, I was working as a road manager and sound man on the road with a band called Clear. And their manager, Dennis King, was a mentor for me. I had a lot of local bands growing up. I've been in bands since I was 13, 14 years old. So he kind of took me under his wing. And because he was a mastering engineer, he couldn't go out on the road with the band. So he decided to let me go on the road with the band. But there was a time when we were looking for a keyboard player for the band. And, De and Dennis was also looking for new singers to produce. So we went to this club on the Upper West Side, Dave? Upper West or yep. Upper East? Yep, Upper and, West Side. Um, Upper East Side. Yeah. Upper, East, Upper side. East Side, right? Big difference. Yeah, 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 big difference. Yeah. <laughs> and there was, a, there was a singer that Dennis had gone to see. But in the back of my mind, I was like, yeah, well, Clear needs a keyboard player. And I heard something in David's playing. You know, if you... if. If you ask me right now, I can't remember what song he was playing, but something about it was very distinctive. And I said to um, Dennis, I don't know the singer, but you should 
maybe you know you should consider getting David to play keyboards with Clear. So one thing led to another, and David ended up being the touring keyboard player with the band Clear. So I don't even think he was aware that I was a singer that I had come up singing in bands because I was just trying to find my way through the music business, you know, meeting different people in in the business because as a as a bandmate, we were having a hard time getting a record deal. But anyway, long story short, um, we're on the road and at some point David heard me sing or something and he, he called me one day kind of out of the blue, even though we were both traveling in New York City circles, him doing a lot of session work, me learning the business and you know, in publishing and all of that, um, he said, "Hey, um, would you like to come make this record with me?" There are more details, but David, you could you can jump in oh. from there. Okay, all right. So, so um, you well, know, it actually started a little a little earlier than that. Mike Mike called me, and he knew I had a drum machine, a DMX, an Oberheim DMX, which was an early drum machine. There were really just two. There was a Lynn drum machine and an Oberheim, and I chose the Oberheim path. That was my pathway. So Mike knew I had it and he invite he wanted me to come to a studio. He had knew these Italian guys who had a studio and I went there and the way I heard Mike sing was these two Italian guys started fighting, like yelling at each other and screaming and went in the other room, slammed the door uh, uh, about the hi-hat pattern or something. And Mike started singing nervously and I heard him sing and I thought, wow, he's got a great voice. So cut to a couple months later, or maybe maybe even just a month, maybe six weeks later. And I had a, a track, and the night before, Madonna was, I was supposed to go in the studio, and Madonna was the one who was singing, had a melody and lyrics, and she backed out. She called me and she said, if my friend can't co-produce this, he's afraid we're going to get a record deal, and if he can't co-produce it with us, then I don't want to do it. And I only wanted to make it electronic, and I knew this other guy would try to add real guitars and drums. So I... I said, well, then I'm not going to do it with you, and I'm going to get someone else to write something else to it, and we'll, I'll do it with them. I called Mike. I thought, I got off the phone. I went, damn, who am I going to get? And then I thought, that guy, Mike Murphy, and I called him up, and he took a day off, and we actually that evening got together, and he wrote a new melody and words, and I'll let him tell you about this, that experience when I... Go ahead, Mike. Yeah. You take so, it from there. Um, that's awesome. We'll ping so, pong back and forth. We got to do this. A yeah, we got to go back you know, and forth like we do. Do right, right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, right. so like I told you, I had been in local bands, and even while I'm trying to learn the music business and working for a publisher and working in an office, you know, learning music and road managing bands, I was still in a band, and um, I at one point brought a drum machine because we would have so many problems with drummers. They wouldn't show up. They wouldn't be prepared prepared so i was like hey i started brought in like this rolling i think it was an 808 drum machine or some little permutation of that and they all laughed me out of the room they laughed me out of the room are you kidding me ha 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 so i had been envisioning uh, i was listening to a lot of the music that was coming out of the uk and europe um specifically like bands like Kraftwerk, um gary newman these kind of early euro they're they're um, from rock and went to kind of electronic synthesizer stuff. And I was dreaming that what the dopest combination, because Rick James just had this uh, call for you and I, and I just met um, Madison Square Garden or something. And my dream was, what if you put Rick James and Kraftwerk together? What would that sound like, right? So this has been, this has been in the back of my mind for a long time. So when David invited me to the loft, I had only known him playing keyboards was clear. So I had no imagination, no idea what his music would be like. I thought it might be like Steely Dan. Or, I just had no idea. So when I get to the loft, he has this set up Oberheim equipment, an OB-8, a drum machine and a sequencer, and he hit play. And when he hit play about 30 seconds in, I was like, this is the track I've been waiting for. This is the sound I had in my head. This is it. Now, all I got to do is come up with a great lyric and melody to convince him to let me do it, right? <laughs> so out of, out of nowhere, I don't know where it came from, but this lyric popped into my brain, and I really was, I really was embodying, like, the syncopation of maybe Rick James on some of his records during that time, but even more syncopated and staccato against his, his 
frenetic, syncopated funk. And so he heard it and he was like, wow, that's really cool. He really liked it. And if you know Dave, it's hard. It's very hard to convince him on first. <laughs> but he, he, really, he really liked it. So he said, okay, great. Now just go home, write, write the rest of the lyrics, and I'll pick you up in the morning. So I'm like, just write the rest of the lyrics. Uh... <laughs> so I did. I went home that night, wrote the lyric. And if you know that song, In Times of Passion, it goes through a lot of different moods. Like it goes from a hard, edgy bang to a very sophisticated chordal part and i was i kind of spent time is that you is that New York so, City excuse or? me no that's dc i'm sorry dc uh, yeah DC. a lot going yeah. on yeah. I, I assumed it was new york city <laughs> i apologize for your background if, if it was if it was here it would be a fire a problem it, here, it would be a fire very close yep. and i'd have wow. to run, yep. run out yep so i was able that i was able to actually um get it done that night i wrote the lyric wrote the melody david came and picked me up from my mother's house it must have been like eight o'clock or nine o'clock in the morning to drive to long island we get to the studio i don't think he had not even heard i didn't ever sing him what we i was going to do in yeah, the studio yeah. but we got there he finished laying down the track we're very meticulously making sure each track was down correct he's like okay your turn. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I go in the studio. No, I knew, look, I had been singing in bands for a long time and this was my moment. So I, I was ready. <laughs> I was ready. So after we got all the lyrics down, he really liked it. He liked all the song. I think we may have adjusted a few things or so. Yeah, we did a little bit. Well, you, yeah. you were still writing a little bit and then we, then we did the, the sort of the rap kind of thing in the yeah, middle yeah yeah the body it. moves i like the way right, your body right, right, moves right. Way, yeah that part yeah um and then you know we mixed it that we, day going into like that night that yeah that night going into like two o'clock in the morning three o'clock by the time i got home i think it was almost it was the light sun out. was rising it was like four o'clock five o'clock in the morning so he drops me off i um I lived in my mother's basement where my band would rehearse sometimes and I had I had a great stereo system and everything and a record player and cassette player. So I put the cassette in and I played it at master blaster volume at like six, five in the morning. I, and when I played it back, I was like, this is incredible. Because you know, sometimes when you create something, you're always, you listen to it and you're like, ah, eh, it's not what I thought it was going to, eh, maybe it's not so good, but I just knew mm -hmm. it was right. So. I called my friend Dennis King, the same person who was my mentor and the manager of the band, and I said, hey, I have this track that David and I did. Could you press a few lacquers for us? Because during my learning the business, I had met a couple music company executives who kind of, you know, they were following me a little bit in some kind of personal way, and they said, if you ever come up with anything, come see me. So I took it to Ray Caviano of RFC, who, uh, the label that one of the bands that I worked in the office for was on, and he loved it. He said, look, I'll, I'll give you a deal. I, I, I love this. I want to sign it. I said, well, I have one more person to play it for. So I go to Atlantic Records because I had a, a relationship because of Clear, and Jim Delahant, who recently passed away, God rest, Aww. God rest his soul, great guy. Sorry. Um, he said, yeah, come on in and play it for me. I played him about 30 seconds of it. He said, wait one second with a big smile on his face um he goes through a door comes back out and in front of me is jerry greenberg who i knew his history because i'm i study music like that he was the youngest president of atlantic records ever he signed some of the greatest acts of atlantic so he comes in he looks at me you know how you doing he sits down in the chair with his back to me so i can just see the back of his head and everything so he listens to the record about a minute and he turns around with the biggest smile on his face and said you got yourself a record deal oh. so i immediately i immediately go downstairs to the phone booth on the corner of sixth avenue and 50 what street is that 50 50 seconds 50 seconds 50 seconds second. and i 60 60 second. and i call david and i say david we have a record deal we got to come up with a name <laughs> right right so it right. really happened that quickly yep and it was on the radio in about three weeks, three and a half wow. weeks on the radio. So that's what happened. Yeah. So that's the, that's how we got our deal. That's amazing. Originally. And it was oh. a hit, by the way, you know, a big dance hit. And, um, <laughs> you know, that was before you're in my system. It's called It's Passion. If you haven't heard mm. it, it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. You should check that out.
I will definitely do that. <laughs> wow, that's awesome. I do want to know this though, like how was it performing on the top of the pops? Like I've seen like various artists always on there and it just seems so real, like in the moment, in the, I mean, the vibe just so awesome. Do you, do you mean, do you mean, you mean top of the pops in England? Yes. I'm not sure we have, did we, we did a lot, we did, we did radio we did shows. One, I don't, I, I've seen a video of us on one of those big Brit shows where the but guy Dick was walking Clark, down the runway. Yeah, but Dick Clark, the one in the United States, um, what was it called? The Dick Clark Show. What was that called? That's, we played on that American a lot. American Bandstand? Yeah. American yeah. Bandstand okay, and yeah. Soul Train and Soul Train. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did Soul Train yeah. and Soul Train. Times. But I don't think we ever played on top of the pops, but, but other TV shows in England too, we, we did. You know, okay, so they might have put that wrong. They might have put that wrong on the YouTube video because it clearly said that. But hey, oh, oh, maybe we did. <laughs> no, you know, no, there's a, like, there is a video. Oh, no, they might have put, it, no, they put a, it typed it out wrong or something. No, there is a video from the UK around that time. I'm not sure the name of the show, but yeah, it was like top pop hits or something like yeah, that. Yeah, like in the oh, system right. was put. I remember. You performed in the system. I remember that song. In your system. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. What okay. were your fondest memories? I mean, like in the 80s. I mean, I know there's so many in terms of, you know, working with some of everybody and just also traveling. What were some of your fondest memories? Well, some of mine were, were actually the, the uh, you know, the development of synthesizers. Um, as you know, going going through it and being able to actually uh, buy them if I wanted to, pretty much, mm. you know, the the reasonable reasonably priced ones, um, <laughs> and so that you know that was actually pretty exciting because there was a lot of electronic, a lot of what's what electronic music is based on now, sort of developed, uh, you know, during the '80s, whether it was like the the MIDI uh, thing called MIDI, mm -hmm. which is the way that you you know you have a cable, you probably know what it is, mm -hmm. so. Um, and it, and it turned, and at that time there were no, there were no computers. They were just microprocessor based sequencers, which were like little computers, but they didn't have screens. They just had a little tiny screen that had numbers coming out of it and stuff. But, um, so actually being able to like participate in, in, in developing that, you know, that, that music and basically using the technology that other people, the techno people were inventing and combining it with, with music and um, notes and, you know, jazz and classical and all kinds of music was really, really a great experience uh, for me, you know, in terms of that, that's just like something that that didn't have really have anything to do with like, you know, the, um, being out there in the public, but it, mm -hmm. but it was a wonderful thing. And it still actually has served us well to this day because people are still referring to us as founders of that kind of music. That's good. I agree, I agree. You all like set the tone for that. I mean, groups like Roy Consoit, um, I think of Yazo or Yaz yeah. or Yaz yeah. back in the yeah. day. Yeah, I love Yaz. Yeah, yeah. And um, the gentleman, movie. Stanley Clark, is it Stanley Clark or uh, one yeah. of the, yeah from different groups from the, the 80s, from the Euro, the European um, explosion. Mm -hmm. All right. of that. Yeah. yeah. It's a good thing. Yes. Yep. And so this is my other question. So where were you at when you got the call that Victoria Adams or Victoria Beckham wanted to Beckham. do the song? Um, don't well, disturb. she wanted the song to Groove. Don't Disturb the Groove. Yeah, where were you at when that happened? Uh, okay, <laughs> I don't know where you were, Mike, but I don't, I, I don't, I don't remember. I, yeah, I, I think that I, okay. yeah, I, I was actually sitting, I think, in the same chair I'm sitting in right now in my studio. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, that's the answer to that. And actually, okay. it was Simon Fuller, her manager, who's uh -huh. the guy who also did like. What yeah, are they called? The, American the, Idol and all American that. Idol and everything. <laughs> yeah. He he called me. He okay. called me and said, "We need you to produce the vocals on this." So he, she was doing a version of our song. Yeah. Uh -huh. And he said, "We can't. We can't get the vocals right. We need someone to produce <laughs> the vocals." Okay, that's what. I'm not kidding. And I said, "Okay." 
um, I'll do it. Awesome. That's it. I mean, that's it. And then I went to New York and did it. That's that's what happened with that. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody knows her as Victoria Beckham, but before she before she was Victoria Beckham, she was Victoria Adams, of course. Oh. With the Spice Girls, like, because oh, I was okay. like, hold on, was she Victoria Beckham or because Beckham no, no. was David Beckham, and then right, Adams right. was the Spice yeah, yeah. Girls, right. was, yeah. Was, and so that's awesome. I see. wasn't she sporty? Wasn't she sporty Spice? Posh Spice. Posh she was a sophisticated was lady, right, the one okay, that had the okay. black on and all that, and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. He, he wouldn't, he wouldn't have married Sporty Spice. He, he was <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, she's she's a really wonderful person, Victoria. She she is. She's That's very awesome. nice, and so is he. So is he. He once came to the studio. I was doing something else when she was singing on another song, like before that time, and he came to the studio. And I didn't know who he was, of course. When all my mm. friends were Europeans and Australians, they were like, do you know who that was? <laughs> like, it's like the same, you know, and I was like, I don't know. Who is he? <laughs> That's David Beckham. He's the biggest ah. soccer. I mean, not soccer, you know, football player. Anyway, yeah. yeah. Okay. So... What what are your like thoughts about the synthesized music now? And I mean, in this day and age, in terms of the sound, in terms of the quality, in terms of the artists behind it, like, I mean, what are your, your thoughts on that? Uh, Mike, you want to, you want me to say, Hey Mike, yeah. can you hear me? No. Yes. Yeah. You kind of froze for a second. Oh, okay. Um, there you are. Yeah. Uh, let's see. You know, I think that, I think things were more synthesizer heavy in the in the eighties. Now it's like a lot of sampley parts and a lot of reverb and a lot of longer soundscapes. You know, only maybe a couple parts to the song. So it's to me it's different. Things are more focused on the eight oh eight and things may be a little simpler. Um I kind of liked the sound of synthesizers in the '80s more. I'm more, I was more attracted to that. That, but you know, there are a lot of great, amazing songs out now. They're just, they're amazing songs, but you don't really, you're not really drawn to just the sounds of the synths. You're, you're drawn to different accents that happen in the songs, and so I think there's a lot of great songs now. But I think the synthesizers, you know, you had Stevie Wonder, you mm. know, who was really a, a early proponent of that you know, synthesizer sound, some of which we may owe a little debt to, you know, the way basses were yeah. being used in those early records. I mean, I, I learned everything. I, I, I sometimes I, I say, you know, I learned everything I know about synthesizer bass from Boogie on Reggae Woman, Stevie Wonder. Yeah. Because I copied his bass. I mean, I think, I think, I don't know if I could go on. I think that what, I think that there's always opportunities for music to change. And right now, like Mike said, like the, 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 all the songs are sort of like very focused on the vocal and reverbs and things that take up like sort of more space in terms of like sonic territory that were taken up more by people playing parts, like thinking, I hear a melody, I'm going to play it, or I'm gonna play like a little harmony part that, that contains a melody because all harmonic parts kind of locked together and with little melodies and that's how that's what there's there's plenty of records now duo duo lipo lipe, duo lipo. Yeah. Duo lipe. There's, yeah there's lots of great records and there's yeah. lots of great producers um tons guys who are who who really know a lot about music and um uh, my some of the names are escaping me right now but there are a lot of the uh uh um Grande, what's her first name? <laughs> Ariana Grande. Grande. Ariana, Ariana Grande. Yeah, a lot yeah. of Ariana Grande. Yeah, Ariana Grande. <laughs> a lot of those parts. There's a lot of interesting parts in there that are all, you know, that people are, that a lot of musicians are working on and making interesting parts. I think that there's two thing, two elements that can change. There's one element that can change things really profoundly, and that is that if people, instead of doing like they a lot half of their time to actually practicing their instruments. If they practice their instruments and stop thinking about promoting their records as much, 
they will be better at what they do. And I know that will happen. Like they're, because there are a lot of great musicians out there and they're not just not, it's just not occurring to them sometimes that maybe they should be spending most of their time actually thinking of really interesting arrangements where people will go, did you hear that part? Did you hear that arrangement? That's incredible. Rather than thinking about, oh my God, we got 17 million uh, streams. You know, so there's a there's sort of like a balance that has to happen. And it's mm -hmm. in a way it's the same as it ever was, because even back then, you know, you'd either caught you. Some people would concentrate so much on promoting their band and doing live shows and all those things. And other people, even us, we were in the studio, like developing our craft and making sure that the record sounded really great. And we actually Mike and I, although we did a lot of things separately together, we never even really had that development time where we were on the road and doing those things. So the possibilities are endless. Like all people have to do is just concentrate on playing interesting parts. And then when you ask that question, you know, there'll be a, a better response, you know, where people will go, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's great, right? Awesome. I mean, and it'll happen, it'll happen. People, things change on a dime. It just takes one person to do an interesting record and all of a sudden it's like Christina Aguilera mm -hmm. it, where there was Britney Spears everybody mm -hmm. was going no one has to be able to sing anymore no no we never it's never going to happen that anyone has to sing again but one record comes out with a good singer and all of a sudden everybody's got to be a pretty good and there are more great singers now than that's ever. right there are than there, ever that, they're like I'm like right. but but for me the only issue is that sometimes so many sound alike. Yes. They yeah. all have the cho the chops are just they have chops, phenomenal. Right. And it's like sometimes it's hard to well who is that? Which one is this one? <laughs> right, right, right. It's like it's I mean no, you know, I'm amazed at the level, the degree of vocal talent. Mm -hmm. And we're not even talking about the gospel realm and the musicianship in the gospel right. realm. Some of the right. some of the players. There's so many but, great but musicians. it's it's hard to tell them apart sometimes which is mm -hmm. kind of right, right. kind of my my issue with what's going on today because the market demands it to sound this way to fit in to right, fit right. in so everybody's kind of gravitating towards it and every time someone new comes out with a you know unbelievable you know sound or style it shifts again just like david was right saying. right like who's who's the girl who's really breathy the oh, super that's, um, breathy you know, Billy Eilish. Billy Eilish, right? I love so, so, so whether yeah. so whether you like her or not, yeah, yeah. She, like contributes, <laughs> recontributes that aspect to to singing yeah. style, you know, yeah. right? And that's the what happens with instrumental style or drum or drum programming or drumming or anything. We could, you could, we could be sitting here today, and by next month, the biggest thing will be to have a live drummer. It's totally doesn't sound like it makes sense. To have a live drummer on your record and all of a sudden the radio it could happen never mm -hmm. anything can happen if someone does something innovative and interesting enough so that it, it it appeals to people's ears absolutely that's great i definitely i, I definitely believe think in that, that. Makes sense. i think it makes sense because i don't know i like music i like all kinds of sounds and i like the creativity Right. And I, I like that. And I also love the fact that people get together and they do their own thing and it's authentic. Yep. I yep. love yep. that. And yep. I and I'm noticing that like in a couple of people that I've spoken to, they've said the same thing in terms of the instrumentals, like people practicing. And that does make a huge difference. Like yeah. I would love to hear people actually get back to that and actually pay respect and homage to the people who, you know, did it before them and yeah. not so get into the 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 promoting of it yes we know it's, it has to be promoted but get into the heart and soul of it the deafness of it the fact that it's going to be great the fact that it's going right. to sound good and it's pa the passion is behind it that right. would be dope yeah yeah that'd be dope so another question has anybody approached you yet for unsung mm, the show no. tv one unsung? You know what every unsung i've seen <laughs> unsung i've seen there's always drama yeah. <laughs> I don't think we have enough drama. <laughs> we like, you know, we haven't killed each other. We haven't like, you know, there's, I mean, really, we've just like kind of focused on making music and just kind of gone with the flow. So I think we're just, I don't know if we're, 
if we're the okay. right material. <laughs> I don't think y'all are unsung though. I don't think I don't think y'all are, but I mean they do approach people like, hey, do you want to be on our show? Supposedly, and 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 you are right in a sense, like the ones that I've noticed, there has been a lot of drama. It's like kind of the same <laughs> yeah. stories, and it's like, oh wow, you know, and yeah, yeah. Maybe we can think of some. I mean, maybe our maybe our new <laughs> our new song, maybe Mike, maybe our new song. Maybe we people can have get some up. drama. Yeah, yeah, people yeah. get no. up. <laughs> uh, you know, people get up. You yeah. know. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Have you seen that? Have you seen our new song? No, yeah, I haven't probably. seen. I didn't see that. When, hold, when did it come out? I'm mad. I didn't know that. No, the video. Uh, the people video. Get up with with yeah. Melly Mel and Sandra St. Victor. No, I need to check oh, that yeah. out. We're yeah, send you should you. check Thank that you. out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Because I'm mad that I didn't know about that, and I'm a music like person, so I need. To, yeah, I need to know about that. Okay. Well, what was happening? Yeah. This, yeah. A lot was Search happening this system. month. So. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. I, I will Wait. check it out. We helped with the election. We helped get Biden elected. Yeah. You'll wow. see when you see the video. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> right, God. <Mike>? Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. So basically, we're, we'll see you at the inauguration too. We, we were the deciding oh, yeah. factor. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know about that, but. <laughs> no, we not were, performing, we're, but we're. you know, being part of the, the musical um, production, like, you know, consulting team. Like, you know. Well, you know what? We should, we should give that a try. Yeah. That would be perfect. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, I mean, we are the system. Make a note the of that. New, we are the new system. Yeah, the way right. things should go. You know, <laughs> <laughs> we're the, the executive producers. Yeah, Mike, make a note on your Apple Watch there. To, to it's the, I already did. It. I wrote five, it down five. right here. It's there. All right, okay, right. Oh right. my god, y'all are funny. That's hilarious. <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh, yeah. That really is. Like during your time, I guess, like you know, in the eighties or whatnot. What was something that, as far as like clothing and, and in terms in terms of brands, what was something that you thought like, what were they thinking? Like, I mean, I know the jelly oh sandals, the shirts where you slap it and the color appears, the, the little white shirts Whoa. and you slap it and the color, yeah, it will like, for instance, your hand will last, like it will dry out eventually. And you see oh, the wow. color, I forgot what it's called. <laughs> But it was one of them, and then the little the little plants you would sing, and they would move or whatnot, and then the wow. chromatic, and then the brands like United Colors of Benetton. Of um, those yeah, yeah. I love yeah. those commercials; yeah. they were yeah. awesome. We used to have one in D.C. They took it out of Georgetown, but that store, that brand is still around though. They just took it out of D.C. But I remember things like that. I remember Jordache jeans, um, Guess. All I remember. Kinds of things. I remember leather jacket. Shoulder pads that was happening. yeah, leather jackets. With, okay, well, leather jackets with at, big shoulder pads. Yeah, look at the look at the video of you're in my system, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. My jacket, I like that jacket. Yeah, I love that. I wish I wish I still had that jacket, you know. Yep, yep. I went through a, I went through a phrase where I kind of got rid of all that heavy early 80s rock and roll gear, and I'm really sad about it because some of it came back around now with a vengeance yeah. Yeah. and i see yeah. it's funny because uh -huh. i was watching a i don't even know the artist's name but um mm -hmm. i was watching a hip-hop artist mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um he had on my whole gear from 1980 mm -hmm. he had like the, the white and black leather jacket with the mm -hmm. shoulder pads he had the tight jeans on he had the the uh the roach killer um boots the whole oh, thing. Oh wow! It was crazy. It was crazy. He had the chain hanging from his wallet. The whole nine. I'm like, okay, all right. It come, what's what's new? What's old is new again. What's old it is sure new. It sure is. Yeah. History repeats itself. Yes, it does. And and I love the '80s. Like, I mean, I was born in '85, but guess what? I still had some things that you know took place and whatnot that I still remember. And mm -hmm. I love it. Like, I mean, of course, like the different shows, the iconic shows, you know, different things. Uh, Speed Racer, that was great, yeah. really great. Okay, do you, do, you know, do you remember the Mammoth Car from Speed Racer? From Speed Racer? Oh, of course. The yeah. Mammoth Not the Car, five. Racing Not the Mach 5, the right? The Mammoth, the mm -hmm. Mach 5, but he's racing the Mammoth Car. Yeah. And yeah. It, looks like, it looks like a train. Well, look that one up. The yeah, mammoth yeah. car, the speed the racer. Okay. The I'll mammoth tell you, one car. Of the, one of the iconic things we did in the 80s uh -huh. was Soul Train. 
Yes. Soul Train, for me, you know, you asked earlier about um, one of the most memorable mm -hmm. moments. And mm -hmm. growing up as a kid in Jamaica, Queens, watching mm -hmm. Soul Train every Saturday and kind of half dreaming about being on the show, but not really because it, was, it seemed so out of reach. And we ended up yeah. being on Soul Train like, I think, four times. Yeah, me too. I yeah, mean, I think we were on Soul, Soul Train like, four times. So four that or five for me times, was an though. iconic moment. A memory that I will I'll never forget. Don Cornelius yep. and Soul Train. Yes. Yep. Soul Train is awesome. So that's that's my question. So that why was it that they had everyone lip sync to their music? What well, was okay, up with so that? I can explain yeah. that because of production. Okay. It's really hard to get a good mix for TV. Really? It's hard. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. When you have a lot of instruments, you gotta plug them up. The sound check and the turnover. Mm -hmm. It takes a long time and that means budget. So a lot of these shows were done on a shoestring budget. It's much easier to, you know, play a track and lip sync than to try to get the sound work. Also, right. artists would have to trust their sound, the mix to someone they don't know, to someone mm. who may not have an idea of how to combine and mix things. So right. I, on balance, I don't think it was a bad idea to have everything, yeah. um, be uh, lip synced. It, hmm. There's a funny, a funny story. Actually, if you want, there's, there's a really great, the video of us doing you're in my system. The mm -hmm. first one, Mike, where mm -hmm. it's just the two of us, uh -huh. you've seen that, right? You yes. know, the, yes. it's a really great little thing and you should watch it 2d. But okay. I remember one story when we were doing, we were on there another time doing, I think the pleasure seekers, I'm not sure what it was. Mm -hmm. And my keyboards were set up and, and you're right. You know, we weren't really playing. And the keyboard starts falling off the stand. And I have to catch it and I'm going, stop, stop. The keyboard fell what? off. And you know, when all the soul train dancers, everybody's dancing and everything. And and they're looking and I'm going, they gotta stop. And the, the dancers are looking at me going, they're not gonna stop. <laughs> Nothing <You're> stops. Just, <laughs> just freaking oh keep God. going. Hey, like, and if you watch wow. it, it's on, it's on. You can see it on, on Okay, uh, YouTube. I'm gonna watch I'm gonna that. And you, <laughs> and you see me just go like <laughs> okay, and I just put it back on and keep playing. I got to see they this. Would stop. This it was the second time I think we were on. Wow, yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> I thought they would. Wow, stop and I mean, start again. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really? lip syncing is not a bad thing. I mean, it just was kind of interesting because when I noticed, I said, "Did they all do the lip syncing thing?" Because I wonder. I, I'm gonna go back and check that out and see, like, yeah, the, did they do were, it for there the were longest? Some band that actually yeah. played live. There were a few, a few times, but I'm just telling you the amount of, of production yeah. and rehearsal it takes to mm. really get the balance and the mix right. You know, it's it's just much easier to do. do it wow, yeah, that's interesting. Do you have like any of your clothes from any of the videos still? You have any of those? You know what? You know it's mm -hmm. really strange. The other the other night. I mm -hmm. the other day mm -hmm. I threw away a couple jackets that were getting moldy and one of them Aww. was the was the jacket from our first album cover Mike that pink jacket mm. wow that had mold on it and I just threw it away the other day oh my god <laughs> mm. oh well Man. anyway I'm glad I'm sorry you brought that up D yeah that's that I'm sense. sorry I apologize okay. and I'm mad it was a pink jacket you know? Cause I like pink jackets. Pink yeah, I, you would have liked it, but it had mold on it, so it was oh. a pink jacket with mold. What about the like, magician jacket with the numbers and the letters? <laughs> I don't have that anymore. Wow. I don't know wow. where that is, unfortunately. But uh, yeah. What were I guess like some of the best um, parts of recording the albums in the studio? What do you remember about that? Like putting it together, the production. And just being in there like, wow, I'm hearing this song right then and there. Wow, that has this little movement, this moment to it. Mm. Wow, there's so many of those moments. For me, I think, well, In Times of Passion stands out because that right. was our first time working together. But for me, it's like, you know, all of our songs that we ever go into the studio with, there's a demo. Like, we always had a demo of everything. So sometimes you do a demo mm -hmm. and you really, when you go in the studio and record it, when it comes out even better than the demo, that's mm. always a great moment. And we had a few times like that where we go in with the basis of the song, with the melody, the lyrics, and when we're finished recording, it's just, 
you know, you really feel proud that you're able to take that initial idea and turn it into something even better than what you thought of in your head. That's awesome. Yeah. Do y'all have like any unreleased tracks? Anything that yeah, you didn't get to? Wow. Well, we have a whole new album that we're we're working yeah. on, but we also right. we have demos and songs that were never mm -hmm. released that we started, never finished. They didn't make mm -hmm. the album, but we have mm. cassettes, cassette tapes <laughs> with those oh, ideas on that. The cassettes. Right, right. I remember yeah, the those cassette. days. <laughs> remember the cassette? Oh my god! Yes, I do. Yep. I, I used to record them on the radio. Um, we'll use them to record, and mm -hmm. yeah, those were. Very sad days. You'd have to rewind them and you know take the little pencil and all that. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> miss take things out. Oh yeah, I don't miss those. Reeling back to cassette. I, I yes. It's, it's, <laughs> it's crazy. Wait, where's the cassette? I don't have one here. No, and oh, then wow. the CD Walkman. I remember when that came out, and I was so happy to get that. I was like, yes, yes, no more cassette tapes. But I do, I, I do remember the the vinyl. I'm collecting a lot of vinyl now. And so um, I just got a pink um, turntable or whatnot, well, a, a record oh. player. And yeah. so tech, Technica. And Techniques, so, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I love, Techniques. yeah, I love that. And I remember growing up, my grandmother had a old school one and she would play that joint all the time. And it was a brown one and she had all the, the vinyl. I remember just, cause I'm originally from Flint, Michigan. So, oh, you okay, know, okay. yeah. So yeah. Motown, of course I'm big with Motown cause 100%. Detroit. And so, 100%. you know, we had some of everything, the Temptations, I mean, um, James Brown, so you Earth, Wind and you Fire. Remember this, you remember this move? When you blow off the vinyl <laughs> before you put it on <laughs> and you hold it by the edges oh and you, <laughs> I remember oh something, but I don't know if I remember that one. But I remember <laughs> like it had an A track joint in there too. Mm, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, it was smooth. Like, yeah, uh, that's the one thing I missed from that house. It was on 3019 Rascop Street. Like, I remember that it was in a corner, like, well, not in the corner, but it was it was in the middle a little bit. And we had all of that. And I used to enjoy that. We would sit around and we would play like music and all that and jam. Yeah. Those were the days. I know. Those are the days. What do you um what do you think about I guess like the reality shows? What are your thoughts on those in terms of like the insta famous in terms of like you know the direction that that's going for people where people are like, "Oh, I can just go on a reality show and I'll get I'll make it big." You mean like housewives and shows like that, or you mean the music? Um, shows? The music, the music aspects, like American Idol, um, X Factor. Well, X Factor. Oh, oh those. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I mean, I think, yeah, I think they're. I think they're cool. I mean, but like I said, one thing I notice is that a lot of the artists sound very similar, and yeah. you know. Some people have accused them of ever having to cut, hone their chops, going in the road, doing shows, five sets a night. I don't really think that part of it's true because, you know, everybody has to hone their chops some way. Um, yes. But it's hard for me to sit and watch a whole show in its entirety. Um, mm -hmm. Occasionally I'll hear a voice and I'll be like, wow. And I'll go back and rewind it, you know, to, to check it out. But I mean, I can, I can kind of take it at least. I mean, it's been going on for what, 20 years now? What's American Idol in its 15th season? Uh, they left Fox right. and then they went over to ABC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And then The Voice and all of that. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it has its place. And I yeah. think it's a great opportunity for new singers coming up to, you know, to be in the spotlight like that. And, Many of them do achieve great success. You know, many of them really go on to great to do great things. That's awesome. Yep. What are you um, What are you currently listening to right now in terms of the newer music? What are you currently listening to? What's on your Well, I want to no, I don't want to say CD because nobody listens to CDs no more. What's on your Spotify? What's on <laughs> that you're listening to on the radio? <laughs> I two songs that I just actually really noticed were mm -hmm. a song called blueberry eyes you know mm -hmm. that song mike mm -mm. blueberry mm -hmm. eyes it's by I, t I can't remember who it's by but it's like a it's a it's a big hit right now blueberry eyes, blueberry eyes. uh 
Who is it? I don't know who it is. I'm going to look that up. Also, Jason Derulo has a song okay. out right now called something about dance. I can't remember what the name of it is, but it's his it's his latest song. Savage. And I thought it was a no. This it's the one no. It's dance. Savage? It's like uh, you dance with me or something, or we dance. Mm. Something about dance. It actually has like, but I can't remember. I can look it up. I can try to look it up on this. The song you're talking about, Blueberry Eyes, by a group named Max, capital letter Max. That's right. Letters. Okay, I have to check um, that out. Which is an interesting. It's just an interesting take on. Because it's like lyrically, you know, no one has ever, I never heard Blueberry Eyes. Now, obviously there's song, there's that song Watermelon Sugar. So there is a fruit motif going on right mm. now. We're already talking yeah, about fruit. On <laughs> <laughs> and everybody's using Savage. Yes. Everybody's using Savage in every song. I know, oh, right? Really? Meg the yeah. Stallion, everybody. Yeah, everybody, everything's savage. savage. Everything's a Savage now, yeah. Well, wow. I listen to, I actually listen to a lot of, like alt ninety seven groups, like uh, mm -hmm. wow, it's got it's gonna come to me. But mm -hmm. they're mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. more alt. They they have mm -hmm. electronic basses, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. very melodic and um, mm -hmm. kind of ethereal. Mm -hmm. um, I'm drawing a blank right now. Some of the groups, but that's kind of what I'm listening to. Uh, okay, we have a station in New York called Alt ninety seven, so I listen to that a lot. Cool. Yeah, I, I mean, I listen. Okay. I listen to the to to top forty. Yeah, I kind of like skip around all over the place. I mean, my my listening habits are mostly, you know, I'll listen to anything mm -hmm. from bluegrass just to because we're playing mm -hmm. on the we're blue blueberry eyes mm -hmm. bluegrass. Mm -hmm. I'll listen to everything, you know, basically all different styles, classical, jazz, everything. But then I always, I listen. I'm I'll listen to the top forty station or the whatever you mm -hmm. want to call it hits, channel two mm -hmm. on Sirius XM. Mm -hmm. And just listen to the same 10 songs, you know, to just hear kind of what's going on. Yeah, absolutely. Gotcha. So to speak, you know. Throughout your career, like, who was the most, I guess, like, the most interesting individual that you came across? Like, doesn't have to be famous. It could be anybody. Okay. Mm interesting their musical artists there's been or? a lot of them it could be anybody i mean interesting in terms of maybe something the way that they think the way that the ideas the concepts musically it could be well, one of the one of the coolest things we did uh just in terms of like a famous person maybe was mm -hmm. we wrote a song with mick jagger from the rolling stones yeah, yeah, yeah. he wanted to write with us so we spent a whole wow. day with mick jagger yeah. right and mick yeah. jagger is yeah. like yeah, he's did. like a real and he and he he sang the song like right in front of us, like 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 this far away. From, yeah. Wow! From our, we have, we have and, a demo and, somewhere, right? We I mean, have it was no, actually it's on really SoundCloud. good. No, it's on that SoundCloud. Awesome. You, you can listen to it, D. You could listen to it right now. You could search it. You have your phone right there. Just look up <laughs> the system, <laughs> the system. Okay. Oh wow! Sound, SoundCloud, the system, Mick Jagger, and wow. it's on there. Okay. Wow! It's, is it there? Hold on. Hold on. Mick well, I mean, you don't Jagger. have to tell me. I don't even yeah, know. Yeah. You... But I'm, it is. I'm Googling it. Google yeah, it. Yeah, it popped up. It popped up. Right there. It That's is. crazy. Why did I do that? And, and, it's, and it's not, and he's not even singing real 1987. lyrics. 1987. There you got it. We sat there yep. with him. There weren't enough headphones in the room for me to wear headphones. So I was just mm. listening to him. Just He was like breathing in my face. That would be bad right now, right? Because if he had COVID <laughs> or something, you know. Yeah. We couldn't do I it right. Get it. I've gotten no. it from him, but yeah. but uh, that was a really interesting thing. And then, yeah, Mike, you got another. I mean, there's um, Otto von well, Werner. We, we, we <laughs> also, <laughs> we had the opportunity to produce. We had um, lots of weird people. Nick Ashford and <laughs> Valerie Simpson. Yeah. Wow. Uh, speaking of that Motown. Was speaking of Motown. Yeah. That amazing. was an incredible moment. Oh my God. They that was an incredible everybody. moment. Yeah, that was oh one of those God. times I had to actually pinch myself and say, yes. like, "What yep. is going on here?" Nick was awesome. Yep. He um, was awesome. Yeah, yep, yep. Nick was really, really yeah. a trailblazer and really one of my heroes. Like, as a as a kid, like loving Nick Ashford's vibe, his style. You know, it was mm -hmm. always, yeah, it was a great moment. Right. I think you also know, another Jay great moment was. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Jason Derulo. Mm -hmm. I was just going to say that the name of that song was Take You Dancing. 
Mm. Thank you, Dancing. And I and I have to say that I mm -hmm. I really, you know, I mean, Jason Derulo has been around for a number of years, mm -hmm. not as long as us, but no. um, so but but take <laughs> but take you dancing. Yeah. Okay. It's actually kind of a cool song. It's like a real, you know, it's and every now and then it occurs to you what the difference is between just what's on the radio and what a real hit song is. Because a lot of times they'll try like lots of different songs will be on the radio but the ones that actually are still playing 30 or 40 years later yep. you don't know at the time mm -hmm. but it occurred to me that those two songs that one and blueberry eyes i kind of thought oh well those are really cool songs okay but back to what we were talking about that's before. awesome <laughs> no i think i think you were gonna say something you were about gonna say artists something we worked with that were oh no, no 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 right it was something so this is okay so who was somebody that you wanted to work with that is no longer here mm, that's a um, tough one like prince uh, whitney luther vandross isaac well, hayes prince did prince did a version of you're in my system that's all over the internet you can look that up too prince how did i not know my that what? okay so <laughs> yeah Oh my God, I love We Prince. actually, like, we never worked with Luther, but we, he was managed by the I same worked, people. I worked, Luther. Mike, I Mike worked, worked for him. Luther. I worked for him. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I worked, yeah, yeah, I worked for Luther for like, uh, my goodness, the first album. Mm. When you saw his productions, I was the guy who handled the smoke machine and the lights. Wow. <laughs> so, but you know what? Oh I learned goodness. so much about how a, he's a quality artist treats the people around him i'm telling you, he treated everybody like they were kings like for real you you know the the accommodations the the pay you know just a sense of really knowing how to treat people luther was a was a real a real prince like for real um, wow i so heard amazing things about him though like literally he was i mean like i remember the performance he did on Oprah when he did Here and Now, and all mm -hmm. the women were in the audience like, <gasps> like that performance <laughs> right there. He was so incomparable. He was, I mean, the performances were just on point to the point the where, level, yeah, yeah, like him, Patti LaBelle, mm -hmm. wow. Like that's yeah. who I think of a people who they are just effortlessly and their talents. I mean, not in their talents, but their, their stage performance. They're always on the stage, and it's just like a breath of fresh air. It's always on point. Who would you pick as your top 10 or top 20 vocalist of all time? Who would you say? I know that's pretty hard. Top 20? Oh. Yeah. Top 20, that's a lot. They don't have to be in order. If you give me five, if you give me five I'm going <laughs> to take, okay. well, I'll take Stevie Wonder for 10 points. Yes. <laughs> I'll take... Uh, David Bowie for 10 Oh, I points. love Bowie. Oh my God, I love Bowie. Um, yeah. Who else will I take on my team? Female singer. Um, Patti LaBelle, of course. Um, Tom Petty, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Yes, rest in peace um, to him. He was amazing. I mean, I, truthfully, there's so many great singers. I mean, I can if I go back in mm -hmm. my in, in growing up, mm -hmm. the singers who I thought were the most amazing, um, you know, Michael Jackson, of course, as a as a yes. yeah, um, but singers like James Brown. I mean, yes. this is where I learned where I cut my chops at the Apollo, Jackie Wilson. <laughs> yes. You know, another singer a lot of people don't know about, but if you listen to when you listen to Michael Jackson. You're listening to Jackie Wilson. You know, is an amazing yeah. singer that a lot of the up and coming, the singers that came after him, emulated. Curtis mm -hmm. Mayfield. I mean, there, yeah. there are just so many great singers and um, performers in the history of music. That Elton John. I love him, <laughs> Sir you know, Elton. So, yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, Elton John. I think he did a live performance at. Um, Soul Train. He did. Yeah, he may have. Benny. Benny oh yeah, yeah, he did. Dead. He was on. He yeah. did do a Soul mm -hmm. Train. Yeah. 
Yep, yep. And that was dope. I mean, everybody was around the piano and everything. Yeah, I remember yep, the, yep. the, I wasn't born yet, but I remember seeing an episode mm -hmm. on syndication though. Okay. Yeah. 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 What about okay. you? Yeah. I, whoops. Sorry. Wait. <laughs> it's I am okay. You. Hold on. It's okay. Gotcha. All right. I'm back. Okay. Um, okay. So I would say just, my favorite singers, okay, Gladys Knight. Yes. Gladys Knight. Stevie Wonder. Yes. <clears throat> Frank Sinatra. Yes. Oh, yeah, Blue yeah, yeah, Eyes, yeah. I love him. Frank Sinatra. Yes. And then there's, a, then there's, and you know, I would have to say just underneath Frank, you know, along with Frank Sinatra, there are a lot of, there's um, Joe Stafford. Look Who? up Joe Stafford. Jeez. I'll, Joe I'm Stafford, look that up. Yeah. Nat King Cole. Yes. Doris Day. Yes. Um, Lena Horn. Yes. Okay, there's a whole, that's a whole nother branch. Mick Jagger, because Mick Jagger had a way of like almost not even singing, and he is incredible, you know, without yeah. even yeah. Yep. really. It can be out of tune. It doesn't matter. It's like the way. Okay, so that's like a whole nother branch, almost. You know, of um, Shaka. Oh my God! Oh, yeah. Yes. Shaka. Oh. yeah, Shaka Khan. Yep. Mick Murphy. Yes. Mick, Mick Murphy. The guy right there. Okay. <laughs> hey, hey. Awesome. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Mike Michael McDonald. Oh my God! That's friend, my favorite. Who's a friend of mine? Yep. Who's yes, a friend of mine? I love him. Yep. Who's a friend of mine? Oh you my know, God, D, I love D, him. we did Mike and I. Mike and I produced an album for Angela Bofield. Oh you my! You know God. Angela Bofield? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Angela Bofield is one of the. Amazing. She's one of the most unique singers Absolutely. of all time. Like she has a completely unique way of approaching singing, mm -hmm. and it is absolutely incredible and it's a great album too it's called is it called let me be the one the yeah, album let me be the one let yes, me be the one the I'm gonna that it up. has the 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 first song is called can't slow down mm -hmm. mm. listen to that album because it's an incredible album that we did it was our third or fourth album that we had ever produced and it was maybe i think it was one of our best i that mm -hmm. that's my opinion anyway for other artists i thought it was yes. yeah that's so, awesome okay that's good yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like that's I mean, you named a lot of my faves, like Shaka yeah. Khan, like that's Shaka that's, Khan. That's, yep. I call her my mother in music. Like I met <laughs> yeah. her at the concert <laughs> many yeah. moves ago. And of course, um, so I loved Prince. That was my father in music. And uh, yeah. I honest, Prince I wish I would have went to his concert before he passed away. Like I literally should have got on that plane in Atlanta. Wow! Because he was dope. I mean, oh he my was. god! Like I yes, saw him. Amazing. I saw him in concert. Yeah, I saw I him in concert. Too. I did a, one I, of the early, one of the very early Clear tours. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's right. Was Prince and Rick James? We did about oh my twenty god. dates of that tour. I that you James. know what? Yes. At the time, I was kind of considering going into the business of music you know like mm -hmm. as a manager as a road manager developing mm -hmm. that but seeing prince that tour kind of turned me back around and made mm. me re remember you know the feeling when i was in bands coming up because that was just an incredible tour we did mm. almost 20 dates with them um, wow. every night the two of them trying to top each other and mostly prince kind of coming up coming out on top <laughs> with a with a, yeah. with a much smaller production, but yeah, yeah, absolutely, one of the greatest tours ever. Wow! You know, you know, Mike, Mike, and I, we the the system. We toured. We did. Well, we didn't do a whole tour, but we did a lot of dates with uh, Marvin Gaye. Yeah. Oh, we wow. we we opened for for yeah. Marvin Gaye. It was in yep. his last. You yeah, know, when he great. had like a giant mm -hmm. band with Sheila E. Was Sheila in the band, E. Yeah. Oh, with, wow. with, with her brother, Ooh, with two her. brothers. <laughs> we're in his band. We're in his band, you know, and it was just the three. We were just, I think it was either three or four of us on stage, oh, four you know, of us. Mike and I and a couple, four of us. And then uh, they had like a 30 piece band. Mm. <laughs> Marvin Gaye did. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. Amazing. amazing. That's awesome. That like, good, oh, yeah. my God. So we're closing into our time, but yeah. I just right. want to say, um, what do you think music is going to look like after COVID? And I mean, literally, after COVID nineteen, 
Well, I think I think it's going to be. I think it's probably improved. They're probably like I was saying before. I think a lot of people have probably been sitting around and they kind of probably have been like practicing their instruments and writing new songs. We have been, and mm -hmm. we're going to you know re we're going to re uh, re educate the world as to what pop music should be with our new album. Yay! Time, time stretching. Yep. Time yep. stretching. Yep. Right? Yay. Time stretching. Yep. That, and that. Because because it doesn't matter. This could be 1983, and then 2020, and then 1984. It doesn't matter. Time folds back on itself. Mm -hmm. And like you, if you've ever worked with audio software, it it, it actually can, you know, you can stretch time, and that's yep, what we're absolutely. doing. Absolutely. Yep. That's the idea. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Like it's been. Oh my god. Like I'm still in star mode right now. Like the star. <laughs> okay, right. Thank you so much for fan having mode, us. Fan mode. Fan mode. No, thank you. Like you really. This is amazing. Uh, being somebody from Flint, Michigan, small town, and Michigan. this is amazing. Yeah. yeah. And just right. having great people from the culture and from the '80s. My favorite time zone well time period or whatnot so thank you so much and i learned a lot like i was literally like trying to jot down stuff in my phone listening like trying to like <laughs> hey I'm, but i'm gonna go through the video myself and like listen to things like you dropped a lot of gems and a lot of important things and literally this is dope so thank well, you okay. so much great well thank right. you you have a Appreciate great day we'll thank, you. thank you you too again okay thank you Stay here. have a good one thank okay. you, See you later. bye bye, bye.